So this roles and authorization was one of the number one upvoted idea that you guys want me to make a video on. If you go to suggestions.webdevcody.com, you can submit an idea. And the cool thing about this, this site itself uses uh, an admin type of role, right? There's an admin role and there's a normal user role. I'm currently logged in with an account that has admin access. So I can see things such as editing tags. I can actually go and edit this to mark the idea as finished. And if I click this, it shows this modal. If you guys go to suggestions.webdevcoding.com, you can't see any of this because I added, in a sense, like role-based authorization controls to the site. And this is the same thing that I have in many applications. For example, my Agentic Jumpstart course, which by the way, if you want to become a more proficient web developer and learn how to use Claude Code and Cursor efficiently and do Agentic Coding to 10x your work, be sure to go to agenticjumpstart.com and join my waitlist. So let me go ahead and diagram this because I do think talking about this at a high level is much more important than the lower level implementation details. If you want one specifically about how I did it with better auth and tan stack start, I can do that. But the high level is where it's important because there's so many different ways you can implement this with PHP, Python, Go, whatever. But the concepts are the same, right? So we have a user and you have a website over here. Let's just call it like your route or your page or your website. When you make a request to this page, typically what you need to do is check, hey, does this person even have access to this page, right? So if you were to put a guard typically like a route guard or something, what you need to do is check something coming from the user and say, hey, do you actually have access to the slash like admin route? And there are two main ways that we kind of achieve this, right? For web applications, typically we have something called a cookie. So you have a cookie and this typically has like a session ID on it, okay? And the session ID is something very long and unique and like there's no way you can guess it unless you were to actually go into the person's browser yourself, grab that cookie, copy it, and then start doing requests on behalf of them using a cookie. So a cookie, if you don't know what this is, it's just another way to store data on a user's browser, right? You've probably seen those cookie banners pop up when you hit a site. It's just saying that, hey, like there's some additional information we're storing on your browser. And the way that you can check that, at least in Chrome, is you can go to application. And on the left, if you go to cookies, look at that, there's a cookies tab. If you click it, you get a list of all the cookies. And typically there's one called session, or it depends on what, framework or library you're using, but there is a value in here and it's a long random string that no one should ever be able to guess. And you take that session ID and this value basically acts as your key, right? So we have like a, a special key and this key is what tells the backend like, hey, I am user of ID one or something like that. Now, some more things I wanna point about the cookie is that the cookie is automatically sent over on every single request. So if I go back to my app, every time I like hover over something and click on one of these requests, if I look at the payload that's going over, you will see in the request headers, there is always gonna be that cookie. So all those same cookies that I showed you in that application tab, these are automatically attached to every single request and sent to the backend, which is nice because after you log in, it'd be nice if we just automatically say, hey, this is our key. So we send this over to the backend. So typically there's some code that sits in front of your API. This could be like a middleware. This could be just some custom logic that you run inside your controller. And you need to check that cookie. So typically there's an actual like way to get your cookie from the request, right? So in our case, I'm using Tansac start here, but I have a get cookie method. And I can say, hey, I want you to look up a cookie with the name of session. And that's gonna give us back that key value that I kind of talked about. So like the value that's inside the session which holds my user ID, All right? So this is gonna go over. Now, technically this doesn't actually have the user ID in it. So I'm gonna delete this before, so I don't confuse you guys. All right, so we have the cookie and then we're gonna do a request to the back end. Let's just say we have like an admin, I don't know, analytics dashboard or something. And this could actually be like admin analytics. Okay, so off the bat, we're gonna send over that cookie. Now the guard is gonna say, okay, I, ha I see you have a cookie called session. We're going to take that session ID and we want to actually look it up in our database. So if I were to add a database here, typically you have like a sessions table. If you're doing like traditional uh, cookies and sessions and this guard is going to look up the session by the ID. Okay. So just basically let's look up the session. ID. look up session ID and then this will be like make request. Now, when we look up the session ID, typically this is going to send back like a payload that's going to have like a user ID on it right? Or it's going to return null. And if it returns null, we know that, hey, like you just gave us a session cookie that had bad information. And so we didn't find a real session in the database that links that session token to a user ID. But if it does come back, we can use that to see if you have access to a certain page. 
Now, again, we're trying to talk about role-based authorization. So where does a role come into play? Like we know that the user is authenticated and they're a real user, but how do we know they should be able to access this route? Well, in some cases in the user table itself, you could probably store a role property. So you could just put the role directly on the users. Sometimes you have a third party system that deals with authentication, authorization, and all that type of stuff. But in a traditional like database type of approach, there's probably some type of table that maps your user to a particular role, or you could have like a permissions table if you want to do fine grained permissions. But for role-based authorization, this is typically how I've seen it. And so since you're going to get back um, the user ID and says, yes, this is actually a valid session. The next thing we do is we're going to look up the user. Okay, so I'm going to say fetch the user using that user ID that was in the session that we validated. And we're like, yep, this is a real session. It's not expired. Also, these sessions can expire. So they have like an expiration date. You have to check that. You can also auto renew the session if it's like made a request before the expiration date, but between a certain window, it can get kind of complicated. But overall, this is the idea. You make a request. There's a cookie that's sent. You use the cookie to look up the session. You validate the session that has a user ID attached to it. You use that user ID to fetch the user data from your database, which will have a role in it. So now we can actually check, okay, we have a user ID of Bob. His role was admin. So yes, he should have access to this. And then you can run whatever, you know, normal logic that you need to run inside your REST API to actually fetch the data from the database and send it back to the user. But if they have a role of like user or normal or standard, and this is the same thing with Stripe subscriptions, you could potentially do the same type of approach where there's certain features that are like premium and you can have an is premium flag like true or false on the user itself. And then again, you can have like an is premium guard and you can put that in front of all your API endpoints and all your pages so that unless this is true, you don't actually allow them to see. So overall, this is how authorization kind of works with roles you know, or like an is premium flag. Um, now, one thing I kind of skipped over was how does a session actually come into existence? Well, typically you have like a login form and I'm going to kind of backtrack because I think talking about the how do you check your API endpoints first was more important. But now let's talk about the authentication part because I do think that's also important. Okay, so typically you have a user and they're going to want to try to log in. Okay, so they could do Google OAuth or they could send over like an email and password. And that's going to hit a back end endpoint for like logging in. So I'll just do like a slash login API endpoint. I could do slash API login. And what this is going to do is we're going to first check to say, hey, the email and password that you provided, maybe in the users table, we have like a hashed password or something. And we're going to go ahead and check to say, hey, like, does a user exist with this email? Does or fetch user via email? That's going to get back the user. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to say, okay, now what we want to do is hash the password and validate DB password. Okay, again, in the password, you store like hash passwords. And so if you were to send in a email and a password here, you can take that password, you can hash it, insult it to check to say, hey, is there a user with bob at example.com with a password hash that matches the one that they just sent in? And then if it does, what you can do is we're going to set a cookie. Okay, again, when you try to log in, you're going to get a response header. So if you go to like your network tab and click on one of these, you should see a response header. And one thing that your server can do is it can send back a cookie response. So if the server sets a header and sends back a cookie, that's automatically going to be put on their browser. So like, so we'll just go ahead and say like send cookie header response. And that needs to have that session ID on it, right? So we did talk about the session ID prior, but we didn't talk about how this comes into this database, right? So if we check the user, they exist and the passwords do match, what we can do is just generate a session. So I'm going to say generate a session record and we're going to give it an expiration time. So like expires in one hour and we store that. And that's what we're going to be using that session ID or the session token. We're going to use that and store it in the cookie. And then we send that back to the user so that every single future request that they make, it'll still have that cookie on their browser with their session token. And then we can start doing the authorization flow that I talked about earlier on in this video. Okay. So overall, that's a high level overview of how role based authorization can kind of work. Again, there's a lot of different ways of how this works. Some people are using JDBTs. If you have like a REST API, you might not be even using cookies. But the idea is the same. You have something that you're storing or giving to the user that acts as a key. And then for every request, they have to send that 
to be able to get access. It could be like an API token. It could be a JWT token that's sent in a header, or it could be a cookie that's sent in a header. Now, I will give you a quick overview of this process in my TanStack start project, just so you have like some concrete implementation. But overall, that's a high level idea that you need to kind of know. Now in this app, I am using Google OAuth. So like a lot of the email password stuff I talked about is not even gonna apply. But the idea is that when you click the login button, it sends you to Google. And then Google is gonna let you click a button for your user account. And then that sends back some information to your REST API or your API. And then eventually what we need to do is we have to basically check some stuff from Google, make sure it matches with our secret tokens and keys that we have. And if everything seems good, like I said, we're gonna set a session. But somewhere in your backend, after they successfully logged in and you made sure that they have the right credentials, you set a session. If you look at this, we generate a session token. All this is doing is generating a random amount of bytes, some random characters, and then we encode it. And then we're gonna return that back. And then we create the session. This is basically gonna store it in the database. And you can see here, we basically get the token. I am doing like a hash over it. So it's a little bit more secure when we store it in our database. But then we also have an expires at. Okay, so we have this token that we store in a sessions table and then we insert it into our database. So if I were to go back to Drizzle over here, we should have a sessions table. Okay, let's go to app session. And you'll see that there's a record here. And it has the session ID, it has a user ID. So we know like what user tried to log in. And it, we also know when they should expire. Okay, so now we use that. If I go back over here, we set the session token cookie. So using that token, we set it on their browser with a particular session key. And there's some additional security things you have to set if you're in production, like you only want this to work over HTTPS. You want to make sure that it's kind of on the same site. You want to put an expiration date and you also want to give like a path. But this is the cookie that we're storing in the browser, which I kind of mentioned. And then every future request from your client is going to send that over. So that's the creating of the session, at least how I did it in TanStack start. Now let's talk about the actual like checking it. Let me try to find a server function that only an admin can do. Okay, so here's a create launch kit function and only an admin, a person with an admin role or an admin Boolean turned to true should be able to hit this endpoint, okay? And so even if you don't know how TanStack start works, this is just an endpoint and we run some middleware to make sure that, hey, is their cookie actually like a valid session? And are they an admin? Okay, so let's first check out the validate request. Again, this is some code that's gonna grab the session token from the person's cookie. Okay, so we have the cookie session right here. And then we go and we look it up in the database. Again, this function is just taking the token that comes in, we look it up in the database, we make sure that it exists. If not, we return null. We make sure that it's not expired. So that's what this if statement's doing. Make sure that the current expiration date is greater than now. If not, we just delete the session from the database and then we actually look up the user, okay? So we do that second database call. We find the user based on their user ID that's inside that session record. And then if they're not there, we go ahead and delete the session again because the session must have been like invalid or uh, the user must have been deleted after the session was already created. But then we also have like an additional thing. This is optional. I have like an auto refresh mechanism. So if you make the request with that same session token before a certain interval, I just automatically update the expiration time on that session so that you can keep using it because obviously you're still using the app and you're active making API requests and deleting stuff and adding stuff. So it's like, it doesn't make sense to like just log them out right when they're using the application. So we do have like an auto refresh mechanism and then we return the session and the user to whatever might need it. Okay, so in this check, this middleware, at this point, either the user is gonna be defined or not. If they're not defined, we just redirect them to like an unauthenticated page so they know they need to log in. And then the second thing we check is we just want to verify that they are indeed an admin, which if you look at the user object, it has an is admin and is premium flag on it. And so this function literally just says, hey, if like make sure this thing's true. And if it's not, then we just go ahead and like kick them out. Okay, so let's go back to the admin middleware. If this is not set, we just redirect them to unauthorized. It's a different UI, different view. It says, hey, you have to be an admin to be able to view this. But if everything's good, they're logged in and they are an admin, we just go ahead and continue on to the next logic in the middleware so they can start using the application like, like they would. So you'll see that everywhere in my application, if it's an admin only feature, I'll have like, you know, this admin middleware. If, if it's a normal user feature, I'll have like an authenticated middleware. And if it's a feature that can work with both authenticated and unauthenticated users, I have this unauthenticated middleware. Okay, so some features that are like public for everybody, 
I still want to get access to their user ID because I might want to do some like analytics or tracking to see who made the request. But overall, you can still make a request to that endpoint. And uh, yeah, I guess this is pretty much the overall idea of how authorization authentication kind of works. Let me know if this was a good overview. Maybe I went too fast. Maybe I didn't really explain something too well. Let me know and uh, go to my suggestions.webdevcody.com if you want to leave another video idea of what I could talk about. I'm going to try to go through these, the ones I find interesting. I'll make more videos on. I know I'm doing a lot of AI coding videos right now, but again, I'm not getting away from web development. This stuff is still super important. Whether you are using agentic development or not, you got to learn how to do this stuff. All right, that's about it. Have a good day and happy coding.